Hello and welcome to the David Icke videocast. Well, the word uh, fascism conjures up in the minds of so many people um, characters like this, Mussolini and Hitler, and of people with silly moustaches and uniforms marching down the street, goose-stepping down the street with their arms in the air. But that's only one expression of fascism, and actually quite an obvious one, an in-your-face version. But fascism is much wider than that. And I would define it as basically the playground bully technique. You will do what I say or else. And on that basis, fascism is everywhere, not least in the so-called liberal democracies of the world. If you look at what the United States and its allies are doing to country after country, currently Iran and North Korea, but also, as we've seen, Iraq and Libya and Syria and so on. They are basically saying, do what we say or else. And that to me is fascism. So what happens is they'll say to a country, this is what you're going to do. And if you don't, these are the consequences. So one, you can just let us walk in and take over or put our proxy um, front people in power in your country and you just move aside and go away. And then, OK, that'll be fine. But if you refuse to do that, one of two things is going to happen. One, either we're going to use our far greater military power to invade you and remove you that way and create death, destruction and devastation. Or we are going to use our global economic might to impose massive sanctions upon your country, which will lead to great economic deprivation, which will lead to um, unrest, protest from the people, and um, an uprising. And we will then activate our agents and groups uh, in your country that we train, arm and fund to turn that protest and uprising against um, what is happening in the country into a full-blown civil war or what we will sell to the world as a spontaneous people's revolution and we'll remove you that way. Because if you dare to respond to the uprising that we have instigated then we will say to the world, he's killing his own people. We must go in militarily and protect the people from violence. And of course, this is a technique that we've seen played over and over and over again, along with the use of the so-called mainstream journalistic media in demonizing the target to prepare uh, the global population to accept his overthrow. So this, by any definition, is fascism. And it's just what the Nazis did. They said to countries, let us walk in and just take over, or we will come in and take over by force, which is what, of course, uh, happened. So we have to look at the much wider concept of what fascism is and get out of our minds uh, what have become almost cliche versions of fascism like this now and realize that it's actually much wider than most people imagine and much more prevalent than most people imagine and takes many more forms than people realize because it's not 
the it's not the way you look like this that indicates fascism it's the techniques you use and the outcome you desire so here's a definition of fascism a political philosophy movement or regime that stands for a centralized autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader severe economic and social regimentation and forcible suppression of opposition well if you um, look at the the term here dictatorial leader doesn't necessarily mean a single person it can be a dictatorial leadership and in the sense of modern fascism indeed if you go deep enough German and Italian fascism too but certainly now it's a hidden hand network behind the scenes that imposes its will its fascist will upon the global population or an individual country whatever via um, what what appears to be a dictatorial leader in a position of political power um, and forcible suppression of opposition again we need to look at the outcome and not so much the means to reach the outcome because the fascism comes in the outcome not just the means so what happened in nazi germany is that um, the books of people who were giving a different version of events to the Nazis or were exposing the Nazis, those books were burned, destroyed and taken out of circulation. Uh, public meetings were uh, banned or um, attacked violently to make sure they didn't happen. Now, that is happening today but there's also um, of course Facebook Google YouTube and the mainstream media in general that are acting as censors increasingly blatantly and arbiters of what people see and don't see and funnily enough people who are challenging the genuine fascism as opposed to these so-called anti-fascist groups that are actually fascist groups, those exposing the genuine fascism, the kind that I'm talking about now, their ability to communicate to the population is being squeezed and squeezed and censored all the time. This is all part of this um, fascistic network of imposition and the destruction of opposition just the same thing just done in a slightly uh, different way and often very slightly different way another definition of fascism a political theory advocating an authoritarian hierarchical government so that theory and that authoritarian hierarchical government can take many and various forms it can call itself a democracy but it's still an authoritarian hierarchical government as we've seen many 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 times with uh, democratic governments of the people imposing their will mercilessly upon those same people um, a very good definition of fascism is um, is given to a, uh, a quote by Benito Mussolini the Italian fascist leader uh, who is quoted as saying fascism should more appropriately be called corporatism because it is a merger of state and corporate power well what do we have today in the so-called democracies other than an amalgamation of corporate and political power with the greater power increasingly in the hands of the corporations and not the political organizations and look at the power again of facebook and google and youtube etc 
the power of um, organizations uh, or corporations like Monsanto, etc., and the pharmaceutical cartel, compared with political governments or the political wing of a government, more to the point. And indeed, here's a definition of government. The act or process of governing, especially the control administration of public policy, the agency or apparatus through which a governing individual or body functions and exercises authority. There's nothing there to say that a government has to be elected. Nothing to say it has to be uh, political in any way, in, in the, the way that we perceive governments to be. It just has to be the ruling power. And what we're seeing now is a ruling power outside of what we call the democratic system, increasingly dominated by corporations uh, who have increasingly not just more uh, power over policy, but massively more power in terms of economic power. Um, it's quite a... Um, it's quite a sobering uh, thought um, to see that 69 of the world's top biggest economies are not countries, but corporations. And this is the way that we have seen this amalgamation of the corporations and the political entities into this fascistic uh, dictatorship and tyranny that hides behind and masquerades as democratic and free societies. And I've written a lot, and I did a video cast about this a few weeks ago, about the fact that the world is run by psychopaths and liars, which are basically the same thing. Psychopaths are pathological liars. Um, and it's not just individuals that are psychopathic. Organizations can be psychopathic. Um, and interestingly, there was a, um, there was a documentary um, a little while ago, in 2003, actually, called The Corporation, which looked at corporations as psychopaths and investigated whether uh, corporations had psychopathic traits. And, of course, they found that they did. I mean, you've only got to observe the world to realise uh, that and the psychopathic way that they um, operate these corporations. I mean, look again at Monsanto and these other internet giants and so many others, the big pharma pharmaceutical cartel, all expressions of psychopathic um, mentality and uh, behavior. So if you think about it, again, look at Nazi Germany, etc. Fascism needs psychopaths to exist because it's the psychopathic mentality that drives fascism. It's the psychopathic mentality that drives all tyrannies and totalitarianism, including, uh, for instance, um, Soviet communism, Chinese so-called communism. It's all run by psychopaths. And when you look at the, the traits of psychopaths, um, it, it does bring the world and world events into, uh, into clarity. There's something called the hair test, named after the man who devised it. It's basically a series of traits. Uh, and if you have those character traits, or enough of them, you are considered to be a psychopath. Here's a few. See if you recognize the world and world leaders and corporations from this perspective. Um, 
Question, do you have a grandiose sense of self-worth? Well, if you look at the arrogance displayed by politicians and corporations in imposing their will on the population, it's the classic definition, really, of a um, grandiose sense of self-worth. Some of the politicians, many of the politicians I've met um, in any kind of uh, position of, of power and even those that are not in any real position of power above being a member of parliament or something have been some of the most clueless um, people you'd ever meet. They, they are not bright. They are not aware of the world. And yet they have this amazing sense of importance simply because of the title that they hold. And the same applies to people in corporations. You meet CEOs. You meet people in high positions of power in corporations here and there. Or you observe them. Um, on the television or whatever. And you think, how the hell are you running a corporation? I'll give you an example. Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook. He's this, oh, you know, I'm I'm running Facebook. You know, I'm in a position of power. I, you know, and, and he's a little boy in short trousers. So a grandiose sense of self-worth. Tick. Are you a pathological liar? Well, this is a bit of a gimme, really, when you're talking about political leaders and corporations. By definition, they are pathological liars. It's what they do. I mean, corporations have whole um, public relations department, uh, uh, departments that lie on their behalf 24-7. Are you conning or manipulative? Political leaders and corporations tick. Do you display a lack of remorse or guilt? Ditto, tick. Exactly what they, uh, they, they don't do, have any remorse or sense of guilt for what they do. Do you have shallow effect? This means a, a lack of emotion and not reacting in, uh, emotionally as you would think you would do to certain situations like not very nice situations. But you see that as well. This cold, callous disregard for the people you affect, whether you are in politics or whether you are in corporations. Are you callous or do you lack empathy? The ability to put yourself in the feelings of those that you make suffer or affect well are you kidding that's exactly how politicians and corporations operate from a lack of empathy for instance there was a story um just a few days ago of um united kingdom corporations growing um avocados in south america who were using so much water to to grow the avocados that the population was now having to drink polluted water because the water supplies were drying up whole rivers were drying up and you see this all over the world with the way these psychopathic corporations impose their will on populations across the world, often the poorest populations in the world. You see the way that governments order the military to cause death and destruction in countries in the Middle East and elsewhere without any empathy for the people on the other end of the, the bombs and the missiles. We've now reached the point where Snipers in Israel just pick off kids 
through the gun sight and just blow their legs off, blow their heads off sometimes. Where, where can there possibly be empathy when you do that? And where can there be empathy, like in the United States government, where you just dismiss such psychopathic behaviour as Israel has the right to defend itself? So you see this lack of empathy, a major, perhaps the major trait of psychopaths, right across the political and corporate system. And for psychopathy, see fascism. Um, do you have a parasitic lifestyle? Well, what do these corporations and political entities do except feed off the people? I mean, the banking system, I rest my case. The entire banking system, controlled by all these corporations, is a network for feeding off the labour and efforts of the population, simply by lending them money that doesn't exist called credit and charging them interest on it. And if they don't pay back the principal and the interest, often through no fault of their own because of economic conditions brought about by the very same banks, then the banks get their wealth that does exist, their homes, their land, their resources in many and various ways. That is the, again, one of the ultimate definitions of a parasite is the banking system. which is a major trait of psychopaths who are needed to drive fascism. And do you fail to accept responsibility for your own actions? Well, look at governments, look at corporations. They are constantly refusing to accept responsibility for anything that they do. So here we have this amalgamation of the political and the corporate, which Mussolini rightly defined as fascism. And the corporate and political world, particularly the leadership level of the political world, is overwhelmingly peopled and driven by psychopaths. And when you bring it all together, you get situations like this. Um, North Korea threatens to scrap Trump summit after Vice President Mike Pence's ignorant and stupid remarks. Well, of course, um, before they could do that, Trump was in. Uh, saying, um, I'm scrapping it because they don't want peace with North Korea for many and various reasons. And um, in fact, peace anywhere is their worst nightmare. Um, but the thing that um, upset the North Koreans and caused this reaction was that Mike Pence, the vice president, Donald Trump, and his national security advisor, the psychopath's psychopath, John Bolton, have all said the same about North Korea in the lead up to what was going to be this summit between Trump and Kim Jong-un, that they favor the Gaddafi model or threatening North Korea that what happened to Gaddafi would happen to them if they did not do what America demanded they do. Here we are, back to my definition of fascism anyway, which is you do what we say or else. And what is this Gaddafi 
model. That you persuade him to stop his nuclear program. And then a few years later, you invade the country on the pretext of we must um, protect the people of Libya from Gaddafi's uh, government and military. And you have him killed and removed. So if you say to North Korea, we favor the Gaddafi model, well, is that going to encourage you to give up your nuclear weapons and um, accept the word of a completely untrustworthy, psychopathic, fascist government that they'll then leave you alone. And we're seeing this also in Iran with the same um, techniques of you do what we say um, or else. Um, it's interesting also that North Korea is being told you give up your nuclear weapons and completely denuclearize, otherwise they'll be held to pay. We will uh, not only impose economic sanctions, which we already are, we'll send the bloody boys in. But Israel having a massive nuclear arsenal and not even having the decency to accept that it has, even though it's an absolutely open secret, that's not a problem. And um, like I say, they don't want agreement or peace with North Korea because they would then lose, first of all, and many other reasons for that, but they would then lose their excuse to have such a military presence in the area, not least in South Korea. And the armament corporations, the most psychopathic of psychopathic corporations, think of the competition, would lose vast amounts of money, which they are currently making through the policies of the US government and the Pentagon, which ultimately will be controlled by those same corporations or that which controls those corporations. And then we come to um, Iran, like I say, exactly the same is happening here. Strongest sanctions in history, Pompeo, Mike Pompeo, the psychopathic US Secretary of State, issues 12 demands to Iran and vows unprecedented pressure. See what I said earlier. Tehran will struggle to keep its economy alive if it doesn't comply with a list of 12 US demands, including Iranian withdrawal from Syria, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo vowed on Monday. Speaking at the Heritage Foundation, how appropriate, a right-wing um, Washington think tank, Pompeo laid out a list of 12 basic requirements for Iran. This is after Trump pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, you can trust them. The demands call on Iran to withdraw from Syria, release all US citizens, what, no matter what they've done, just because they're American, end support for Houthi rebels in Yemen, stop enrichment of uranium, and promise never to process plutonium. Iran must also allow unqualified access to all nuclear sites throughout the country, Pompeo said. And those demands are designed to be so severe and so humiliate Iran if they acceded to them that they know they won't be acceded to because that's not the plan. The plan is to have an excuse for more ongoing conflict. And um, again, here we have Israel with a very, very uh, serious nuclear arsenal that refuses to accept it exists and thus is never subject to having it inspected. America's, Britain's, the Western moral 
West's response to that? Silence. So again, with North Korea and Iran currently, we are seeing the fascists and psychopaths, whoops, I repeat myself, saying, don't do what we do, do what we say. So they say that Iran must withdraw from any presence in Syria, a presence that is there um, with the support of the Syrian elected sovereign government for any ever people might think of Assad. That is a fact. Um, but the United States is illegally in Syria and has been from the start invading the land with its military and then occupying a great chunk of the land, which it is now, against the will of the Syrian sovereign government. Thus, under international law, it's there illegally. But is it going to withdraw as a prid pro quo with Iran withdrawing? Of course not. Because psychopaths and fascists are about, never mind what we do, you do what we say. They're demanding that um, Iran ends support for the Houthi, uh, quote, rebels in Yemen. But the United States is supplying state-of-the-art weapons to Saudi Arabia to mercilessly bomb civilians in Yemen to the point where they have created what is described as the world's biggest humanitarian crisis. So are you going to stop doing that if Iran stops supporting the Houthi? Of course not. This is how fascism works. And um, one of the demands that um, America is making of Iran is Iran must end support to Middle East terrorist groups, including Lebanese Hezbollah, Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Now, of course, all those groups are targets of Israel. Thus, this is all being done on the behest of nuclear Israel. But there's no mention there, of course, of the United States, not only support, but creation of terrorist groups and proxy armies like ISIS and Al Qaeda. Because fascists and psychopaths do what they want while also telling everyone else to do what they want or else. Um, shocking double standards. Protests continue for third day in southern Iran city as Pompeo tweets support for the demonstrators. Um, support for the, for the demonstrators, he says, we, have, we support the Iranian people who are demonstrating against an oppressive government. Um, three deaths and interrupt internet interruption show the regime's true nature. Um, this is said by an American regime that was behind the creation of the fake Arab Spring to create upheaval, turmoil and civil war across uh, the Middle East. And of course, when Israel used snipers to kill demonstrators, unarmed demonstrators, that's okay. They're just defending themselves. And um, this is really uh, the way things are going um, in Iran uh, under the, um, the auspices of the psychopaths that control the United States, Israel, and indeed Saudi Arabia. 
Um, this headline says US, Israel and Saudi Arabia can aid coup in Iran and if it fails let Iranians fight each other, said ex-Mossad official in military intelligence psychopathic arm of Israel. The US, Israel and Saudi Arabia can change uh, regime in Iran and Trump's policy provides the opening for it, a former top, never former, never former, just not official anymore. Mossad officials speculated, adding that if a coup fails, Iranians will still be fighting each other. You see this psychopathic lack of empathy that fascism must have to become fascism. Never mind the consequences for the people of Iran, the civilian population of Iran, of great civil war upheavals, as we've seen in Syria and Libya and Iraq and elsewhere. The outcome they want, regime change in Iran, is all they care about. Classic psychopathic mentality. Haim Toma, a former Mossad official, like I say, forget the former, um, said to lead intelligence, counterterrorism, and international divisions, explicitly talked about the possible options of regime change in Tehran during an interview with the Jerusalem Post. He outlined what a possible coup in Iran would look like. Israel could, quote, clandestinely help facilitate regime change, which is doing all the time around the world. And the US could support it on various fronts while the Saudis could fund the effort. This is how the psychopathic network uh, operates. Uh, between countries that appear to be unconnected. Asked what exactly Israel could try, he said, clandestine actions can lead to change. There is a lot that Mossad can do when it gets a mission. I cannot go into details, but it would be clandestine. Well, just look at the Arab Spring and endless other people's revolutions that have been externally manipulated, and you'll see um, the techniques that he doesn't want to talk about. And then this week, of course, um, Trump regime slaps new sanctions on Venezuela after sh sham election. The Trump administration has stepped up economic pressure on Venezuela, announcing new financial sanctions which would prohibit U.S. citizens from purchasing any Venezuelan debt. The move comes in response to the re-election of President um, Nicolas Maduro, uh, Maduro rather, on Sunday, um, which official Washington um, has dismissed as a sham and refused to recognize. Um, they call for uh, Maduro to restore democracy and hold free and fair elections, etc. Um, but what it's really about is there's a regime in Venezuela, and it's not perfect. None of these regimes are perfect. Not in Iran, my God, far from it. Not in North Korea, ditto. Not even in, in, in Russia, same. But it's not about what's right or wrong. It's about what the psychopathic fascist network wants and what it doesn't want. And it doesn't want the current regime in Venezuela or Iran or North Korea. And so it targets them all with um, sanctions because you see it has no moral compass psychopaths and fascists have no moral compass uh, in the sense of this is what I believe to be right this is what I believe to be wrong and therefore judging everyone no matter who they are by that compass instead it's I'm judging you by this criteria Iran, North Korea, Venezuela, Iraq, Libya, Syria. And I'm judging you, United States, Western so-called democracies, Israel, etc., according to a very different criteria. Because it's do what we say or else. With no empathy for the effect on any one of what you do. 
So that's one area of fascism that is all around us, in our face, on the news every day, but called democracy. But there's another area of it, which is connected to this side, which is the so-called progressive mentality. Progressive is a name that came out of the United States and is believed to be interchangeable with the word liberal when the progressive mentality that's taking over the universities and the colleges, etc., um, is the very opposite of liberal and operates in a way that is um, as illiberal as you could imagine. It's the progressive mentality, the anti-fascist fascism, which has hijacked the term liberal and has hijacked the traditional left of politics. So now the progressive mentality has taken over the left and it's taken over the perception of liberal. And while liberal is about maximum freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of lifestyle, progressive is the very mentality that is driving political correctness, which is destroying people's ability to have free expression and free lifestyle and free choice. And connected to that are these progressive anti-fascist fascist groups like Antifa who go around pontificating about fighting fascism while acting in exactly the same way that fascists do. They want to silence people they don't agree with. They want to ban the meetings of people they don't agree with. They want to um, stop um, the ability to function of anyone they don't agree with. And if that means violence, well, that's OK. Not a problem. And yet, they call themselves anti-fascists. But if you don't want people looking over there to see the truth that you are actually fascistic, you want them looking over there at other people you claim are fascistic. Therefore, they don't realise that you are everything you claim to rail against. And so this definition of fascism that I have, which is do what we say or else, absolutely applies to the anti-fascist fascists and the progressive mentality that is driving political correctness. It's all an expression of this fascistic world that we're moving into, which is claiming to be the opposite of what it is. And of course, these same people then, whether they're the fascistic psychopathic governments or the fascistic psychopathic progressive mentality, they point at the rise of what are called nationalistic parties in Europe as a sign that fascism is on the rise. And thus we must fight fascism when actually fascism never went away and is now playing it out itself most obviously and most influentially through the very people who were saying, look, the rise of nationalistic parties, fascism's on the rise. And how more fascist and psychopathic can you get than to propose and move towards the fusing 
of the human brain mind with artificial intelligence so that artificial intelligence controlled by the fascists dictates people's every thought and emotional response and perception. This surely is fascism in its most extreme form, but it's sold as technological progress. And who will control the AI, the fascistic mentality that's behind it? So um, we've kind of come a long way from these fellas, the usual visual perception of fascism. And when you look at the wider definition and you look at the outcome rather than the, uh, the fashion wear, then you realize the scale of fascism and how it didn't disappear at the end of World War II. It just changed its jackboots and its uniform for business suits and podiums and corporate boardrooms. Like I say, fascism is not only here, not only all around us, it never went away, just changed its propaganda, changed its sales pitch. And if we're not going to fall for this gathering fascistic world to go on imposing its will ever more extremely, we better understand that fascism is not coming. It's here.